G'day everyone and welcome back to the Cyber Minutes podcast. My name is Max and today I'm joined by Flynn and we have some really good topics today. So we're going to discuss the Change Healthcare Ransomware, uh, which is a really interesting thing that's been ongoing for the last few weeks, as well as a topic that's kind of struck a nerve with Flynn and I on data collection and retention in Australia, specifically on the pubs data leak. So we'll get into that as well, as there was an interesting incident that's happened with, with a lot of confusion and smoke and mirrors about Barnett's couriers. So we'll get right into it and start off with the change healthcare ransomware. So Flynn, what do we know about this ransomware attack? Yeah, so I think that what's really highlights the change healthcare. So basically this uh, ransomware happened earlier in the year. Um, basically a massive thing. And also, I don't think we've covered it in the podcast, but there was a lot of drama within uh, the Alfie ransomware gang from this breach because basically there was disputes about payment and stuff like that. Um, but more or less, what ended up happening is Change Healthcare got hit by a ransom. They ended up paying it. They ended up paying $22 million. And what's very interesting is that they are still suffering from this be- breach. So currently, as of a week ago, when I saw an article, it was $872 million in costs that they keep, uh, that are still ongoing. And I think that they were predicted around 1.6 to 2 million is how much they're expecting is going to be the damages. Sorry, uh, two sorry, billion. billion. Yeah, two billion. Yeah, 1.6 to 2 billion dollars, um, which is insane when you think about it. That if you weren't like a massive healthcare provider, um, that would be enough to go bust. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, a change healthcare is an American uh, healthcare system, so I'm not 100 percent certain on how they function and how much of it a hit to their bottom line this is going to be um but i mean when you're getting into the billions you're going to assume it's at least something to you know uh it's it's something to be a bit worried about it really goes to show that we've said it a lot of times before is that paying the ransom even though it might seem like you have no other choice often oftentimes it's just it's just not the answer because even though they pay 22 million dollar ransom it, the costs are just still rising even though they should have got their data back. I'm pretty sure they did get most of their data back, but the the damages, the getting everything back online is just absolutely insane for them. Yeah, 100%. So Change Healthcare have 150 million customers in the United States, and I think they're one of, if not the biggest healthcare provider in the United States. And this outage, so this ransomware attack did cause outages of their uh, essential systems. It meant that people couldn't get coverage in um in the United States. So people uh, weren't able to pay or weren't able to get money back from doctor's visits and all that kind of stuff in the United States. And there's a really interesting sort of drama going on because this was an, like you said, an Alfie Black Cat attack. And there's a bit of an interesting story. So the guy who exfilled the data and who actually has kept most of the data when he set up the ransomware payment, that got sent to some uh, Bitcoin, you know, some wallet somewhere. And there were people in the gang or uh, around that space who had taken that money and actually gotten rid of that person's access to any of those funds. So he hasn't been paid and he still has all of the data. And last week I was looking through and there were some communications on some dark net forums where he was going to potentially set up another ransom with change healthcare or or release all of the data, just uh, sell it to the highest bidder. So it creates a, a huge dilemma where where the company paid the ransom and, you know, they're still going to, you know, not have any resolution from this happening. Because normally yeah, what, we've, what we've said before is that some of the business models, how it works with these ransomware gangs is it's based on trust. And a lot of the time, if you pay up the money, then they're going to keep this end of the bargain, delete your data and, you know, do that. But this is a case where the company has sent the money, but the, the ransom where like the actors, they're, they're going to demand more money or do some worse stuff with it. So, so really it's, it's, it's quite a sticky situation and a very uncomfortable one for change healthcare and all of their customers yeah absolutely and as i said we're currently sitting at the 900 to a billion uh dollar mark if that also happened where you know they've 
put um you know this guy you know either does another ransom or he puts the puts the data out on the web who knows what the damage is going to be and also um i'm not 100 percent sure how they've calculated this data but i assume that there's certain residual costs that you know can't be calculated you know how much of that is you know customer loyalty that's gone out the window and they've lost customers from that that's something that you know they can't exactly calculate um and that's potentially uh even more damages to that yeah it's it's going to be one of those ones where this is kind of big enough to for people to remember it for at least a few years right so yeah the, you know their their reputation is going to get massively you know impacted by this and you know it comes out it's worse to know that i don't know does it seem worse if a company that you're uh, a customer of has paid the ransomware and then not followed through to make sure that the 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 deal's been set up properly <laughs> so like does that make it worse yeah they've paid it which is you know some people might say that's bad enough but then also they haven't double checked where it's going to and you know now there could be further extortion or your data gets leaked everywhere and and the stuff that's been leaked isn't just username passwords it's some fairly sensitive stuff yeah absolutely um something that is interesting about what you said is that it's going to be a reputational hit i'm not a hundred percent sure but i remember seeing something about how their stock price didn't actually plummet that much from this Mm. and it's also what's interesting about these massive cases we saw this with uh equinix um basically something like a ridiculous percentage of the american population had their data breach in the equinix thing which is basically um everything that you would need to commit identity fraud in America, like tax file numbers, oh, not tax file numbers, there's a social security numbers. Yeah. Um, basically everything you would need. And they they saw that their stock prices plummeted immediately. Yeah. And then two to three years down the line, they're higher than they've ever been. Um, basically, it's hard to, it's hard to quantify cyber, uh, a cyber incident because at least with these bigger companies where they're kind of really set in stone in America or Australia, we've seen it in Australia as well with Medicare and Optus where they're starting to sign to kind of get their foothold again and starting to, you know, um, I suppose stable, stabilize. Yep. Um, and it's a big issue with this as well, because sometimes I feel like with these bigger companies, they kind of go, well, what's, what's even the point? You know, we spend all this money on security and then, um, a couple of years down the line, our stock prices are exactly the same anyway, or they're higher. Because Equinix is higher than it's ever been. Yeah. Um, which actually leads well into our other topic for today. Um, basically, a courier company in Wollongong, Barnett's Couriers, um, they're obviously nowhere near as big as a company as Change Healthcare or Medibank or anything like that. Um, but they had a cyber incident, the specifics of the cyber incident haven't been released although based off of what they said where it stopped operations we could probably assume it's something like a ransomware attack um basically they've just uh, they've just said they've gone bust they can't do anything about it their operations have completely stopped if you ring their phone line um they say after 40 years of operations uh we now can no longer do do anything because of a cyber attack um and i think this goes back to what We've kind of said this before, where I think cybersecurity is such a massive issue with small to medium businesses. Yes, 100%. Um, Yeah. And and I think that it's not, it's hard to take seriously because you obviously, as a small to medium business, you're worried about, you know, doing business. Yeah. You don't really have the the budget to, you know, do worry about security all the time, but that's what that's where the prime t- targets are really yeah 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 no your your whole thing as a small medium business is keeping food on the table right making sure that business is flowing yeah. and and stopping interruptions as quickly as uh they can occur really so a lot of the times when we're talking about like general cyber security and things that we want changed while we obviously want to see change happening from the bigger companies to set an example realistically the ones that hurts the most when you don't adapt to change is a small medium business because If it's true that this is actually, you know, this has been the root cause of their company ceasing operations, it should be a big wake-up call because, you know, what if I've got a medium business, small medium business that, you know, say we're we're living to, for lack of a better phrase, paycheck on paycheck, right? 
and you get hit by something like this, it could very well flip your business upside down and, um, and yeah, completely cease your operations. Full stop. End of story. Yeah. Um, you know, we say small to medium business, but that doesn't, this was like a big operation, this company, like, as I said, 40 years of operation, um, you know, thousands of trucks from what I'm aware of that, you know, who knows what they're going to do with that now? That's so much money. And I think they've had, hun- they had hundreds of employees as well, as far as I'm aware. Um, so it's a small, medium, uh, business in regards to, you know, the bigger picture when you're looking at the, the Amazons and whatnot, but it's still a big operation. Um, and there's plenty of people that are going to be affected by that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, it, it pays to make sure that your cyber team is staying up to date with everything and, you know, constantly trying to innovate and improve to make sure that the um, the low-hanging fruit doesn't get exploited. Because I, I can guarantee that, you know, it probably was low-hanging fruit for this small medium business that probably got exploited. Yeah. 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 Oh, not even like the cyber team. It's probably likely that it's just, yeah, you know, at HR, I'm not calling out HR people, but, um, you know, it's just a HR person or someone in finance or something like that where it's not someone who's not savvy and they don't know the consequences of this. And that's just the, you know, the starting point. That's what leads into the company and, um, compromises everything. Yeah. You know, it only takes one person to click a phishing link. But yeah, no, the, the, I guess the main things to take away, away from the, the, these sort of incidents is, yeah, make sure that you have, you know, the right backups in place, make sure that you have the right systems that are going to allow for some level of redundancy, right? Like that if you get hit by ransomware, you know, it it doesn't take everything offline because it seems like for healthcare, for the healthcare company, it would have taken a substantial of, of, you know, primary important resources offline, uh, without any, you know, type of backup really like losing the data is bad enough, but then having all of your like systems impacted and costing a billion dollars in, in damages, it's insane. And you know, same for the couriers. Yeah. If they had some, you know, hot or warm backup in place, you know, you'd expect that they'd be able to at least keep the lights on. Yeah, you you would think so, but um, uh, th- it's still an unfolding story as well. So um, we'll see. Uh, and because it is a smaller company, we may never find out. But um, yeah. that's what's currently um, been released to the media is that it's a cyber attack that's just made them go on completely bust, which I actually haven't seen that much before which is kind of crazy yeah yeah and um so let's move on to the next topic we had for today so there was a data breach for some uh software or some company that was affiliated with lots of pubs and rsl clubs around new south wales or all of australia do you remember which one it was flynn yeah, yeah. So it was New South Wales. So from what I'm reading as well, it's potentially over 1 million different um, ACT and New South Wales residents. Uh, and why Max and I wanted to talk about this today is it's something that we've covered before, which is that Australia is uh, terrible with data retention. Um, it's an absolute joke how much data we're just holding for absolutely no reason in Australia. Yeah, so we had a conversation with a mate who... Uh, is doing his master's in cyber intelligence and works around sort of the pubs and clubs sphere. And he was telling us about how the reason why there is a lot of data retention in this is because it's uh, it's related to lockout laws, which supposedly, if basically, if somebody is kicked out of a club or a pub or whatever, they need to hold that data so that if you go into another club within a certain radius, um, they know that it's you and they won't let you in. That's me and Max have had this conversation that it just feels like it's such a rudimentary solution to to the problem. Um, and, you know, like, why are we reten- uh, holding this data? Why can't you just look at this data and either, you know, say, click, put it on the checklist. Okay, yeah, we've seen this data. Or if you really need to do that lockout stuff, you know, delete it after a certain period of time. Make it uh, in law that, you know, this has to be deleted after a week or so yeah yeah so i think some of the data that was lost was names uh addresses and documents such as like driver licenses and stuff because for those who aren't aware when you go to a pub in new south wales you give them your driver's license or valid id they scan it at the front and then they'll let you in so 
that scanned data is being sent to a database, which it appears is not encrypted properly either, and is kept there so that they can keep your data for later. If you get kicked out, then yeah, other pubs can access that data as well. Yeah. Now, what we were saying is, yes, why don't they delete the data after two weeks, right? Like, okay, fair enough. If you get kicked out of a pub, whatever. Fair enough, you should be able to not be let into places nearby. And there should be some level of retention to the data. Why isn't it set up for just two weeks maximum? Because after two weeks, you know, not everyone needs to know that you got, you got kicked out of a pub two weeks ago, right? If it was such a bad incident, then they can file a police report, which is permanent, right? But it doesn't need to be permanent that you got kicked out of a pub one time. Now, I personally have never yep. been kicked out of a pub, but it just annoys me that this data that I've, I, like, yeah, like I said, I've never been kicked out of a pub, but my data is stored in these... Because it big, may happen. It's yeah. It's a silly thing. And, and it's stored what seems like forever, which is yeah. incredibly stupid. Yeah. And also, on the data stuff, so you got the main things right, but I've got the um, a quote that says, it says that the data included facial recognition biometric, driver license scan signature, club membership data, address, birthday, phone number, club visit timestamp, and slot machine usage. So you have everything you needed to commit identity fraud there. And then on top of that, you have everything you need to blackmail an individual person. Yeah. It, like imagine you, imagine you find like your manager is, you know, spending tons and tons on gambling or whatever. That's an easy way to uh, blackmail someone Yeah, right there. That, that amount of SPII that's sitting there most likely unencrypted or very weakly encrypted, that is absolutely unacceptable. That, like, this is, I'm going to go off a limb and say that's probably the worst case of data retention that I've ever seen. All that much information that's sitting there with, and, you know, what seems like an unlimited data retention, very little protection for that data is absolutely unacceptable. And pubs in New South Wales needs to get their shit together because that is, that cannot happen. That is woeful. Yeah. And I think it's, I think that, there's two ways that this could go from here. One way is that people... Oh, also, by the way, the person who was responsible for this was actually a, a New South Wales resident. They've caught him, which is good. But now that people have seen what kind of data you can get from here, I think that there's two ways this could go. There could be the case we saw with um, hospitals and stuff like that, where now pubs and clubs become a prime target because now they go oh, okay, well, this is a gold mine of data. It's probably not that hard to get into. Why don't we just attack this all the time? Yeah. Or it could be an uplift for the industry. Yeah. I'm a bit of a pessimist. I think it'll be uh, the first option where people will start uh, attacking this more frequently. Um, but I suppose time will tell. Yeah. Um, hopefully I'm wrong and hopefully that, you know, people sort of uh, figure their stuff out. But yeah, who knows? Who knows? But yeah, one thing's for sure. Uh, you know, next time you sign into the pub, I'm not. I'm not incentivizing this at all. But you know, it's worth having a thought about where your your data's going. You know, you don't want to rough up the the personnel and say, "Hey, where's my data going?" But you know, just be mindful that you know that data may be stored somewhere which you don't like. Yeah, I think I think the saddest point about this is that even though. Like, because we're aware that this is the case, but what are like, what are we gonna do? Like, you have no choice, really. Yep. Which is the saddest part about um about uh, Australia's cybersecurity now is that sometimes it feels that you're a little bit helpless as to what you can actually do to, you know, stop being a a potential victim of identity fraud or other cyber attack. Yep. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And just one more thing I wanted to mention. Uh, by the way, we got this request from a viewer. We wanted to just talk. I'm sorry, I just wanted to talk a little bit about email spoofing. So uh, I've actually seen an uptick in this in the far, past few months where I've it's looked like I've... Sorry, for people who don't know what spoofing is, spoofing is where it looks like you're getting an email from an official uh, person or company or just an official email address, but actually it's coming from a threat actor. And so frequent ones that uh, I'm seeing at the moment are emails that look like they're coming from yourself 
So the emails that are coming from your, it looks like it's coming from, you know, whatever your email is. And it says, hey, I've hacked into your email. I'm sending this email to you from your email. Uh, I've caught you out doing something or another, or I have your details, your old passwords, and they'll try and scam you through, just trying to convince you through that way. These are fake. <laughs> They're scams. Uh, don't trust them. If you see an email that looks like you, it's coming from a legitimate source, so such as your email or say it says it's coming from Microsoft, but it doesn't look like it. What you can do is just, you might need to Google this. You want to inspect the header elements of the email. So if you do a quick Google search on how to do this, you can do this on Outlook or, you know, whatever email service you provide, uh, you're using. And you'll be able to see extra information about the email. And it'll probably say the actual email address where it's coming from, which all of the time is not going to be who that says it's from. So, yeah. Yeah. Just one final. So actually on that as well, this, this is something that we've, um, I've done a fair bit of work as well is that email spoofing. If you don't have the right DMARC in place, um, on your domain, so this is more so a company thing rather than an individual thing. But, um, if you're a company and you don't have DMARC in place, please do it. Uh, basically there's plenty of resources online. Um, it's really easy to do. It does take a bit of time. So basically you have to uh, set up your SPF and DKIM properly, and then you make your DMARC go from none to quarantine, which is basically you're reviewing emails and you think that legitimate ones are going through, and eventually you go to reject. Um, and that will basically stop spoofing from being able to happen, uh, on least, at least on your domain. Um, something you can't really control as like an individual, unfortunately. But, um, that's a something to look into if you're an IT person. It's uh, it's fairly simple to do as well. Um, it does take a little bit of time, unfortunately, but there's a lot of um, tools online to help you do it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, stay safe, everyone. And uh, if there's an email that looks like it's coming from somewhere which is unexpected, inspect the email header and just be cautious. Thanks for listening. Just a reminder that the Cyber Minutes podcast is for educational purposes only. The views expressed by hosts and guests are their own, not necessarily their employers. Advice discussed is general advice. We promote ethical discussions, not illegal activities. Have a cybersecurity question? Send an email to cyberminutespodcast at gmail.com as we'd love to answer it. Stay cyber safe.